Good morning. For anybody that's watching the video, just my perspective. I believe it was given to me by God this morning, early this morning. Just my perspective. You don't have to agree. I don't have a bunch of scriptures, but it's something regarding our, you know, our mortality as a person. And I'm just, you know, when you get older, you never think, you know, about the, the different issues you have. But hey, same issues, the things I kind of like laughed, <laughs> laughed at. You know, regarding my parents, the thing they were having in their medicine cabinet, the bathroom, preparation age, false teeth, you know, all aspirins, creams, you know, icy hot, you know, Epsom salt, the same stuff they use. And I mocked and laughed at in the 80s, that's the same stuff I'm using now. You know, teeth falling out, the broken teeth, uh, you know, him rods, you know, achy joints, or surgeries here and there. So it's like, you know, the mortality, the mortality is real. So this morning, you know, I'm just laying in the bed and I'm not saying I seen Jesus or God spoke to me, but I, I, I can tell when I'm getting a word from the Lord. And then, you know, I, even people like me can get a word and it was just talking about redeeming time. It's like you never think about redeeming the time. You know, you hear things talked and preached, and it, sometimes it might be 30 years later, if you live that long, or 10 years later, or 40 years later, and it dawned on you what, what, you know, the real meaning is it. So you can't never, you can never count someone out because they can be, end of this one year five years from now they can be into that that's why God is so long suffering with people God is in eternity his angels holy angels in eternity even the, even the fallen angels they are in eternity demons are eternal in eternity uh, we are e immortal creatures our spirit part the soul and spirit it's just the body part that's going to perish but we don't know how old we are because God is infinite it's no no beginning or end and we were in God think about this you were in God so God just breathed life into a clay body your spirit and your soul is with God and he placed your soul and your spirit in a clay body in your mother's womb to be down here a short period of time but when you die this natural body dies according to Ecclesiastes the civil cord breaks it's a spiritual thing your spirit separates from this clay body you go back to God see what I'm saying you go back to God but you've been in God who knows? It could have been a trillion years. We don't know. You don't know how old your soul and your spirit is. Because spirits, souls come from God. It's just a clay body God made, you know, from the earth that he created. That that, that doesn't be around long. The Bible declares that our bodies, the time frame is like a vapor. If you ever crunk your car and the vapor that comes out, you know, a little water, you might see a little water, but a vapor comes out. As soon as it hit the atmosphere, it, it dissipates. And it's like he said, like a blade in grass. Like here lately, the, you know, the grass has been real brown. So, it could be green one day and the next day it's brown. That's, that's what God, in his word, declares is you know, we're made up of our substance. I mean, it's, it's only a short while as far as the body, the clay body, the dirt. If you ever been, you've seen a dead body, they still look good sometimes, 
but it's nothing inside of that body to animate the body. So, what was on me this morning is like, hey, you must redeem the time because God takes, the Bible declares God is one of the fruits of the Spirit. He's very long suffering. He has super, super, super patience. You know, it's like a parent, you have to be patient. But God patience far exceeds a parent's patient. Long suffering, patient, merciful, kind. You know what I mean? He just, he has a lot of grace because his time doesn't end, it's eternal. He got all the time because he made time. You know, he made, he put us in this time, time thing, but he don't, he don't sit in time. He immortal. So he not he operate outside of time. We are in time. So when you look at God and you look at heavenly things, there's no time because God operates outside of time. He made the time for us. It's like he gave Moses a time period, even though Moses Moses was perfectly healthy. He said, "Well, you're gonna die on this day," and he would do that a lot of times. And, with men and women of God in the Bible. Even with evil men and women. He would tell them, hey, if you don't stop doing what you're gonna do, you're gonna die. Like, uh, I think uh, uh, I think it was Belshazzar, I could be wrong, that mocked God and drunk out of the vessels. You know, his father had uh, went crazy for seven years and was out there eating with the animals because of his transgression, he had got the big head, but God didn't kill him, but he let him go out there and eat like an animal, grass and stuff, but he came back to himself after seven years, but his son didn't remember all that. If you read it, God said, way, way, wanting, wanting, and you know, a prophet told him because he didn't understand because the finger of God showed up on a, uh, a wall and wrote something. The finger of God, if you see a finger come out of nowhere right on the wall, it, it probably would be frightening. He was frightened. They said he his legs, knees start bumping together in fear. But God said, wait, wait, won't you, won't you? And I think he died that same night or the next day because of his foolishness. You can't, even, you can't mock God like King Herod did. I don't know which one. I think it was three in the Bible. I don't know if all three of them was wicked, but King Herod allowed people to uh, to blow his head up and he called himself a God. Let himself think that he a God, like he doing all this stuff. And the angel came along and hit him and the worms started eating him while he was still alive. Now you got worms in hell that don't die. I think these was worms straight from hell that started just eating him right there. He died right in front of everybody with his foolishness. But my point is, God don't operate in time. We are in time. I see the mortality in myself. You know, I got some health issues. I thought I would never have. I see other people have that, but I won't have that. But I'm having that. So whether you save or you unsave, you holy or unholy, the mortality is real. You know, you have to think, hey, you even a, the healthiest person, sometimes they just die in their sleep. Or they have still have a heart attack or cancer hit them. Whatever eat them up or from the inside or they die in a car crash, the mortality is real. So God, it landed on my heart to make a video, just, just think of your mortality, you know. Think of your mortality. Think of the time you can think back to now and where you're going. It all leads to the grave eventually. Now I say if you die in Christ leak Jesus, you drive down the Lord, you sleep. And you got to break that down. That don't mean you, you sleep and you get up. You're in a spiritual sleep. You're in a rest. You, you, you go where God is in a peaceful state, you in his house. Just like those that died before the promise, 
I mean, if you know the word, you had people that died before Christ was born on the earth that believed in God. They didn't go to hell like the rich man. You know, if you remember the rich man and Lazarus, they went into paradise. There was a gulf in between hell and paradise. They went to a place of uh, peace and rest until Jesus came on scene to die on the cross because blood hadn't been shed yet. He had to shed his blood. Nobody could go into heaven. A man couldn't go into heaven because Jesus had shed his blood. The sacrifice hadn't been made for any man yet. So you had types and shadows of it, but that's what happened. You have arrived. But those people died, even though they live. Some of them live like Adam. They live eight, nine hundred years old. They still eventually died. And their spirit and soul had to go somewhere. That's what I'm getting. I mean, nobody, nobody's exempt. Nobody's exempt. Nobody's exempt from, from dying. And if a person don't die, you got to wonder, who are they? What, what are they? You know what I'm saying? They got to be an angel or a demon or God himself. So we know that God operates out of, out of time. That's like the archangel Michael, Gabriel, Ariel. You got seraphim, you got cherubim. You got the 24 elders in heaven. And you got other, there's seven different types of angels. You got all these different spiritual beings. Like I said, they operate outside of time because they in eternity. And that's where we all going. We going into eternity eventually. And, and the, good, the good thing about it I know a lot of my videos be uh, seem like fire and brimstone or something bad. It could be all good. Really, it could be all good, you know? If we choose Christ Jesus as our Lord and Savior. And that's the thing he, he presses on me. He say, well, who, who is this dude to make any videos on behalf of God, why God can't come down and make him himself? Who is he used broken people or or this type of person? None of us perfect. We all are striving. But just like God used Moses, Moses was imperfect, but God has to use a mediator because the people couldn't stand the pressure of God. At one time, you know, he gave an example. I think in the book of uh, Exodus, where the people say, well, I want to talk to God himself. And when God got to speaking, they, they were so afraid because of the power, the, the thunder and the lightning. They said, well, we'll just listen to the man. God always give his prophets. He said he, before he do anything, he'll give his true prophets a word before it happens, good or bad. And that's true. That's true. If you've been around long enough, you you know that's true. So it's it's, it's it's very imperative that we start thinking about our final resting place. Our final, uh, as the word say, or I, it might not even be the word. Our long home. Our 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 uh, eternal place. A being because just like you have dreams whether they're good dreams or not that's your spirit man your spirit inside of you that's that doesn't sleep you know your spirit doesn't sleep so that that's one indication that you know it's you have a spirit dreams Somebody say, well, that's just uh, your, your conscious or your subconscious. That's your spirit. 
A lot of times you go through weird things, that be your spirit fighting in your dream, running in your dream. Some people get blessed in a the dream. They, they see good things. Some people see bad things. But that's your spirit. That's just one way of God. He give us dreams, letting us know that our spirit is real. Then you, if you go to Romans chapter 12, it talks about how God created the world. This is one scripture and did all these different things. And it talks about how people are doing a lot of strange things. But it indicates to me, and if you break it down, that every creature, every creature God may understand their creator. You have some type of faith, some type of belief system, and some people just nullify it, cancel it out. Some people build it up like me. I'm trying to build my faith. I want it to be stronger. You know, when I see the wind moving the trees, that I can't see the wind, but I believe the wind is there. So that's that's a type of faith. Somebody say, well, I, I have never seen wind, but I know it's one of God's creatures. Wind is, is, a, is a particular creature. It has a voice. It's a creature. The sun is, is alive. It's a, it's a certain creature. You say, well, it's just a, uh, like the moon and sun. These just planetary things. But like the Bible even talks about river have, rivers have voices. Rivers. Everything that God made is alive. Every animal, every tree. Even the Bible talks about the rocks crying out. You might say it, might have, it was talking about the uh, the Hebrew people, the Jewish people crying out. But it say the rocks cry out. The Bible say rocks have a voice. But we have to be aware of eternity. You got to you got to know you know you look at your family all my you know a lot of my favorite uncles <laughs> and I had some I uncles boy they was some character they gone grandma's gone cousins gone even one of my children has passed on that hurt but I know that they just went back to where they came from. God is so precious. God loves us so much. He not going to make something. Let's say I've been with God a billion years. My soul and my spirit. I don't know. A lot of things God keep from us. You know, it's, it's say our mind only oper our brain power only operates to a certain percentage. I mean, if God opened up everything to us in our, our brain capacity, we might couldn't handle it. That's like when Adam got kicked out of the garden, I know a lot of people say, well, those books in the Bible are not canon and they're not legit. Some man chose that. Some man chose which books to put in the Bible, which ones to take out. So you got to be led by the Holy Spirit because I know some of the books they took out are actually real scripture from God, inspired by God. I know that for a fact. Like the first book of Enoch, Jasher, Jubilees. But you got the book of Adam and Eve. They say, well, it's fictional. But if you read that book, it line up with Genesis. Adam and Eve, once they got moved, removed from the garden, they lost their mind. And God had to do a lot just to keep them going because they were like a type of angels. They didn't need uh, the type of food we eat now. They didn't get tired. They didn't get sick. They didn't have a time limit on their lives. They were uh, immortal. But after they did what they did, they sinned. They opened themselves up to death and sickness. And when they got put out of the garden, they had to work. Things was hard. So if my mind <clears throat> if could comprehend being with a God so many billions of years and having in this way in eternity and all of a sudden I'm put down here for a certain reason and it's just hell, pain, hell and anguish and sickness and you know I ain't saying all of it's bad 
but most a lot of it's bad and it's getting worse. I wouldn't be able to comprehend it. But this is all I know right now. But it said we're looking for forward the thing, the present thing that we suffer now. Don't compare the Bible say to uh, what God is going to give us in eternity. We can't comprehend. It's like he talks about in my father's house are many mansions. You know, people don't get sick. You don't even need. It's like I was looking at something. It's kind of funny. It said, well, if you die, you martyr yourself. And I'm not picking at that particular religion. It's 72 virgins waiting for you in heaven. Why would you need a virgin? We don't need to procreate in heaven. Ain't no marriage. Nobody dies. You don't need that. I don't. Why would I want a nagging wife in heaven? I don't. You don't need that. Angels don't need that. A minister spirit. You don't have to procreate in heaven. That's just something. I mean, to feed your lust or your or your your ambition or your. I don't know. Being fanatic, you know, you well, if I blow myself up or kill this many, people, I'm gonna get these virgins. You just looking at it from a sexual part. God don't look at things. He don't look at things like we look at. He you don't. Know, he don't look at. You know the material thing that we look at. You know, and, and once you get a new car, I had them. It's like after six months, you're like, damn, I got I got all these payments. You know, it's like <clears throat> the 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 joy kind of rub off. You know, it kind of fade away. But just just think, just take the time just to think what, where you're going. Even if you're a young person, hey, you might have been 15. Five years ago, now you 20. And the person, hey, you, you 30, now you 45. Like me, I just had a birthday. I just turned 55. But my mind, I still can remember, thank God, running around the track, Carolina High School. I seen somebody post a picture of us when we was uh, playing Pee Wee football, Gant High School. I can remember some of those things. And that's, that's an awesome thing, having memory. Just think about that. Your mind can remember that like a computer. That's awesome. That's the thing God gave us. Look at the, just look at the things around you. The water, how it's made, the trees, the wind blowing. I mean, the, the food we eat, how the body breaks down and create energy, how your eyes can operate, you know, create sight, how you can just walk around, you know what I mean? How you can run. How you can speak, how the how the body creates your vocal cords can create sound. All this stuff is amazing. God did it. He said, I made you, you're fearfully and wonderfully made. Just use your mind, open your mind up to creation. Read um, um I'm sorry, Romans chapter 12, and God. And meditate on God. He'll open your mind up and then let you see that you're going somewhere. It's like a lot of us, we want to store up, store up. We're young, you know, money, and it's good. That's a good principle because God used the grasshopper and ant. But you're not storing up to be here forever. You're storing up to live comfortable as an older person, a retired person. But you're not, you're not doing that to to be here forever. That's like uh, people in uh, Egypt started embalming themselves and creating creating mummies so that when they crossed over in death, they even killed some of their servants, some of the higher echelon, so they would have service in the afterlife when they came back. But I... To, up to this day, I, I never seen a, a pharaoh that was around, you know, it was 22 dynasties I know about. I never seen them come back to life. Not one. I ain't never seen them come. I seen them in the movies, like the movie Mom, Mommy. You know, that's fiction, but I never seen them pop back up to life. People have been raised, risen from the dead, but it was in the name of Jesus, you know, most of the time, right after death, Jesus did it himself with Lazarus. You know, you know, just to prove a point. I'm God manifested in the flesh. Look at me. 
You know what I'm saying? This man had been dead four years. He called him back. He said he just sleep. He was sleeping the Lord, his spirit. He hadn't been judged and thrown into hell because once you have been judged by the Father and thrown into hell, ain't no coming back from that. People have visions of going to hell, but they haven't been judged. Lazarus, saw, his spirit and soul wasn't in hell. It's like the little, I think the little girl that died, a little boy. Their spirit didn't go into hell. So they were able to be called back. A preacher can do that now if that's God's will. Call the spirit back into the body. But that, that's that's the power of God. So I just I just hope, I mean, I love each and every every one of y'all. That somebody just meditates on your eternity. Where you at? Where we going? We living in such dangerous time where it don't even matter, young or old, we always come along. Most time with older people to die. Every now and then a young person, you have seen like more young people dying than the older people now. A lot of it is out of craziness. Racing cars, wrecks, uh, you know, robbing people, fights. You know, all kind of crazy things. Death comes, like my daughter got murdered. You know, God give us a certain time frame. But we can we can cut the Bible said we can cut our days and we can extend our days by how we live before him. If you read the word of God, according to the book of Psalms, it said we can extend our days or we can cut our days. That's one of the promises in the commandments. I think the word one of the first commandments with promise. It said if you honor your mother and father, this is what happened to you. But if you dishonor your mother and father, this is what can happen to you. And you see a lot of people dishonor their parents and they, they die young. Even your heavenly father, he your parent. He might have said, well, you died 79, but this person died 31. They smoking drugs or, or shooting up or drinking or uh, doing something crazy. Not saying good people don't die. You have good people die, police officers or firefighters or somebody just driving home from work could be a good person. They die in an accident, but that's not God's will. A lot of times the enemy is, 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 is we being used by the enemy to cut our time. That's another thing. We allow the enemy in our lives to cut our time by the things we do. That's not God's will for young people to die. Somebody said, well, that was God's will. That's not, that's not true. That's not God's will. That's like cancer, little kids. That's, that cancer that got in them little kids, it, most times it comes through generational curses or something the parents did or the grandparents did. Somewhere along that, in that generational line, open up for demonic spirits to hit those little kids, even in their mother's womb. And I, I'm gonna test. I can testify to that. I have stuff coming against me through generational curses, generational demons. As a firstborn, most people couldn't imagine, and a lot of people couldn't handle. But God said, "I wouldn't put more on you than what you could handle." Harold Bart, you can handle this through me. Even though sometimes things come so hard, you think you're going crazy, but you can handle it only through me. Trust in me, lean not to your own understanding. Uh, acknowledge me in all your ways. I think it's Proverbs 3 and 5. Trust in me with all your heart. Acknowledge me in all your ways. Lean not to your own understanding. So it's not God's will for people to die young. It's like he told Moses 120 years, that's it. He said in the, in the word. He cut the years for a certain reason, but who want to be here 800 years old in this current situation we, we living in now? Sickness, tired, death, all these things going on. So God, in God's mercy, he cut the year. He said the average would be three score and 10. So that's 70 years. Even though people live it a lot longer than that. But a lot of these people gain some type of win wisdom and have some type of routine 
to sustain, you know, themselves. Now, you see sometimes people have bad, every night and bad habits, and they live that long. But what are you doing with that time? Every second, every minute, every hour, every day, it's precious for you to grow closer to God. He not he is giving you the time. Satan wants to cut your time. Hell hell wants to cut your time. If you're not connected to God, your, your name is not written in the Lamb Book of Life. So if he cuts your time, that's it. You have no more chance. That's it. That's it. You have no more opportunity. So you got two forces fighting. Hey, I want to cut this person off. That's like I use DMX. See, like he was really trying to get himself together, but he couldn't just break some of them strongholds. The demons on him. The enemy cut him off before he could come back. He was a young person. I think he was just 50 years old. And some of them get it going and stuff, and they know they're going to die. They don't care. But I think he really cared. But you can't, you have to redeem your time. Every moment of every day is precious. You know, you, we have to repent. We have to draw closer to God. We have to, we have to really use our time wisely. So I, ho I hope this helped somebody. And if you haven't accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, give him your life. Build a relationship with Christ. Call on and pray fast. Read the word. You don't have to be a religious person. Go to a church two or three times a week. Find religious people. Uh, salvation is personal. Because when I die, my mother's not going to be there. My father's not going to be there. He's, he's dead and gone. My children not going to be there. My friend's not going to be there. My enemy's not going to be just be me. And my Lord and Savior, and he will make a determination about my long home, my eternity based on what I did for him. Because if you read, I think it's in uh, John 15, in uh, some of the four gospels, it talks about God giving us talents and different seeds. And he, and, and the father in heaven is the is the husband man. That means he's the um, he he owns the farm. He owns the farm, so he give you he give you the tools and the seeds to operate in in the and on the farm, so to speak, in the world. He give us everything we need, and while he's away, he expects us to produce fruit. And they said when he come back to his farm, which is the world, when he come back to your life, so to speak, he comes back to your life, your particular life, your particular wall, your name is written. Hey, this one right here, check on this one. Their time is up for whatever reason. He's going to see what you produce. If you read the book of uh, John 15, it talks about some producing uh, good fruit, being connected to the vine. He said, if you produce a fruit, I'm gonna trim and prune you. And if you ever seen a plant trim to prune, you know, it's kind of, it look like